Welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're at Exodus 12, verse 29 today. Just verse 29, here's the reading. Now it came about at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. At midnight, the tenth plague strikes, and the deaths here are described as being caused by God. The Lord struck all the firstborn, it says. Now remember that all the way back in Exodus 4, 22 and 23, what did we see way back there at the beginning of all this? Notice this, quite important. God had identified all the people of Israel as his firstborn. And he had also stated unambiguously that the consequence of refusing to free them would be the death of the Egyptian firstborn. And what is there? There's nothing. What is there that would prevent God here from, from slaying all the Egyptians and delivering all the Hebrews? Now remember, all the nation is his firstborn. Singular, so therefore all the nation of Egypt, singular, would be the enemy, would be the firstborn to be slain. So God, following his own uh, pre-warning here, could, could have just genocided the whole nation, just said, okay, all Egyptians are dead. But in his mercy, God limits the consequence here of this oppression to just the firstborn of all the Egyptian, the literal firstborn. And what's more, God told them ahead of time, and there was nothing that really prevented any of the Egyptians from shifting gears, changing course, uh, and coming in along with the Hebrews and missing this whole plan. I mean, you could have saved your Egyptian firstborn son by following this, the council we'll have here in these few days. Any family could comply with the conditions of slaying the sacrifice, marking their doorposts, being in at midnight, and of course, we'll see further on here, circumcision was also a necessity. But there's not a person in the whole nation of Egypt that couldn't have experienced God's mercy in this point. Now, keep in mind also, there have been nine kind of previous uh, evidential runs here, like the first plague was, was foretold and it happened, second, third, fourth, and so on. There have been kind of nine uh, affirmations here that what, when God, God means what he says, and what he, when he says he's going to do a plague, he, he's going to do it. Now, notice also that the, the entire Egyptian people is subject to God's judgment because the entire Egyptian people have put up with Pharaoh's willful uh, uh, rule, his willful oppression and enforcement of oppression upon the Hebrews. I mean, they have participated in it. Now, listen to these lines by Douglas Stewart from his commentary, who, of the event, he says this, it is a judgment against an entire society and their absurd religious beliefs that led them to practice the horrible treatment they had given the Israelites in the past, thinking it appropriate. Evil for evil would have been accomplished if the Israelites themselves had figured out a way to kill Egyptian babies after having come to a position of power over their former oppressors. God, not the Israelites, did this killing of the Egyptian firstborn, however, and did so within the bounds of his righteous judgment against evildoers. So as I pointed out here at the front of this devotional, uh, nothing prevents God from saying, okay, the, all the Egyptians, you know, craters that crater the whole place. Nothing prevents that. But God's mercy says, no, I'm not doing that. And so it was just the firstborn that were subject to this risk could have been prevented if people by now had sort of gotten, figured out that, oh, the God of the Hebrews is the real deal and the crocodile God and all these other frog gods and stuff are not the real deal. People are made in the image of God, that people have innate rights in their humanity. Simply put, we are not to oppress others. There's never a time. People must be free to worship God in their actions and in their conscience. Whenever a people force bondage upon another people, they are placing themselves onto a throne of illegitimate leadership. So God sends the 10th plague. This is the ultimate. We'll carry on tomorrow morning.